Hello, this is On The Spot STEM, and today we will be tackling 2017 Amy 2, problem number 11. Five towns are connected by a system of roads. There's exactly one road connecting each pair of towns. Find the number of ways there are to make all the roads one way in such a way that it is possible to get from any town to any other town using the roads and possibly passing through other towns on the way. So this is a graph theory problem where we visualize the connections between towns as nodes and roads as directed edges because the direction of the road matters because the roads are one way. And this condition where there has to be a path from any two towns is complicated, but we should think about what automatically fails that condition. One question we should ask ourselves is, what if it wasn't possible to even enter or exit one of these five towns? Then there'd be no way to get into that town. So say like town A was blocked off as such, then there's no way we could get from, let's say town C to town A. So any configuration where one town has roads all coming out of the town that automatically fails. And by the way, in graph theory, town A would be called a source. And likewise, if there is no way out of the town like this, then you can't get from town A to town B and a configuration where you have one town where there's no way out, that automatically fails as well. And in graph theory, town A would be called a sink. Since I will be using the terms source and sink throughout the video, I put the definitions on the whiteboard to refer to. Anyway, we deduce that a configuration where there's a source and or a sink will not work, but we don't know if this is a sufficient condition for there to be a path from every town to every other town because there could be some configuration that exists that doesn't have a sink or a source but it's impossible to get from town A to town B by using the roads. However, one very powerful tool in graph theory when dealing with connections involving directed edges is to look at loops and to look at their size. Remember that we only have five towns to work with and not something like 2017 towns, so that makes it a lot easier to play around with the graph and figure out how big the loops need to be. And we are doing this under the assumption that no town can be a source or a sink because we want to ultimately figure out if, if the graph having no source or no sink is sufficient enough for us to being able to get from any town to any other town just by using the roads. So let's start with town A. Because we know that town A cannot be a sink, it must point out to some other town. And let's have it point to town B because it doesn't matter which one. And we know town B cannot be a sink, so it must point out to some other town. It can't point back to A, but it can point, point out to C, D, or E. So let's have it point out to town C. And like with town B and town A, town C must point to some other town in the graph. It can't point back to town B, but it can point back to town A. And here we have a loop consisting of three towns, but we could continue this loop from town C to town D, and town D cannot point back to town C because the roads are one way, but we can have town D point back to town B, which creates a loop of three, or we can have it point back to town A, which creates a loop of four. But we can also continue this loop to town E, and town E can point back to town C, which gives a loop of three. It can point back to town B, which gives a loop of four, 
or can point back to town A, which gives a loop of five around all five towns. So just by playing around and using the fact that we were assuming that no town could be a sink, and that a town had to point to some other town, we were able to deduce that the graph is forced to have a loop of three or four or five. So we can break this up into cases and ultimately determine whether we can reach any town to any other town using the one-way roads. So the first case is that there's a loop of three somewhere in the graph and we'll denote A, B, and C as the towns in this loop of three. And the other two towns, one of them, there has to be a road between the two and it doesn't matter the, the direction. But we do know that D is not a sink, so it must point to some town, which has to be one of these three because of the direction. It can't point back to E. So there must be an entrance to this loop of three from these two towns, which means E can also enter the loop. And we have to make sure we can enter these two sets of towns. And we know E is not a source, so there must be a town that's a road that's coming into vertex E. So it can't be from D, so it has to be from one of these three towns. So as we can see, with a loop of three, we have shown that every town is reachable from any other town. Now let's move on to the case with the loop of four. Town E is neither a source nor a sink, so there has to be at least one road coming in and at least one road coming out. And because all the other towns are in a loop, there's an entrance into the loop and an exit out of the loop. So we have shown that if there's a loop of four, then we can reach any other town from any town. And the case with a loop of five is easy because we can just rotate around the loop until we reach the town that we want. So just by playing around with those loops previously and still using the assumption that there are no sources or sinks, we prove that to reach any town from any other town, the configuration merely just has to be free of sinks and sources. But there could be multiple sinks or sources and we should try to figure out how many there could be. So let's assume that town A is a source. And then let's try to make town B a source as well. So all the arrows must be pointing outwards of town B. But we assume that town A was a source and that already fixes the road between A and B. So we can't have more than two sources in the graph. And Likewise, we can do the same for sinks and prove that there can't be more than one sink in the graph. But can we have a sink and a source? Let's make B a sink. Then that means we have these arrows pointing into town B. And it works out without conflict. So we can have either one source and no sink one sink and no source, or one source and one sink. And it's a lot easier to count out all those bad cases and subtract them from all the different configurations. So we're going to be using complementary counting. So now we are really ready to solve this problem. First, let's Think about how many configurations there are total, regardless of whether a sink and slash or a source is present or not. So there are five choose two roads because we choose any pair of, ro of towns and there's exactly one road in between those two towns. So five choose two is ten and there are two directions that we can assign for the for each of the 10 roads. So in total, there are 2 to the 10 configurations that may or may not contain a sink and or a source. 
now let's consider the cases where there is a sink or there is a source or there is both. First, let's consider the case where there is a sink, but there may or may not be a source. With Let's assume town A is the sink. That means these four roads are fixed because we want to make it so that there's no way out of town A. However, it doesn't matter what we do with the remaining six roads, so the number of cases here is 5 times 2 to the 6. And the 5 is there because it doesn't necessarily have to be town A to be the sink. It can be town B, town C, town D, or town E. And next, let's consider the configurations that contain the source, but we don't know if a sink is present or not. Again, let's assume town A is the source. And again, six of the roads are fixed, four of the roads are fixed, six of the roads we can change to our desire. So we write five times to the six again. But here we overcounted the cases where there's a sink and a source because there's some overlap between these two cases. So we need to add those configurations back in because we subtracted them off twice, but we only want to subtract them off once. So let's assume town A is a source. Next, let's assume town B is a sink. And there are five choices for our source, and then after that we have four choices to choose our sink. And as you can see, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven roads that have the direction fixed, so we can do whatever we want with the three remaining roads. So we add back five times four times two to the three. And now we have to actually figure out what this expression is equal to. So first we can factor out the 2 to the 3. Oops, that should be... And now we have to figure out this term inside the parentheses. 2 to the 3 is 8, 2 to the 7 is 128, and then we have minus 40, minus 40, but we add back 20. And then this comes out to be 68, and then we multiply that by 8, to get 544 for our final answer.